Eddie Mabo was born on the 29th of June, 1936, by the name of Kawiko Sambo. He was born on the island of Mur, also known as Mary Island today. The island of Mur is in the Torres Strait between Australia and Papua New Guinea. It is the largest of the Murray Islands in the Torres Strait. Eddie's mother died giving birth to Eddie, and he got passed on by customary law to his mother's brother with his father's consent. They were part of the Pitarim clan. He changed his name to Eddie Kueko Sambo when he was adopted by his maternal uncle, Benny Mabo. From an early age, Eddie learned all about his family's tradition and heritage. Eddie went to primary school on the island of Mur, but otherwise had no education. His parents said he had a bright future, but did not push him to carry on school. Eddie preferred the name Kariko, but like most Torres Strait Islanders and Aborigines, he also had an English name, Eddie. When he was 16, he was exiled for embarrassing elders with a secret romance. He then moved to mainland Australia. In Australia, Mabo worked on pearling boats and as a sugar cane cutter. He also worked as a railway fettler before he married his wife, Benita Niehau, in 1959. They had seven children. Eddie's daughter Gail is an Aboriginal artist and dancer. She also serves as the family spokesperson. Eddie's ambitions were to call his traditional land his own. In 1981, Eddie Mabo and several other Merriam people challenged the Queensland government. They fought for the land rights of Aboriginals and Torres Strait Islanders. Eddie was the main spokesperson. Eddie already had experience as a spokesperson as he was involved with the trade union at Townsville where he worked. In 1967, Eddie was employed as a gardener to the James Cook University. It was here that two professors explained to Eddie that he and his family didn't own the island of Mur and that it was owned by the Crown. In 1981, a land rights conference was held at James Cook University. Eddie made a speech about land ownership and inheritance of Mur. A lawyer at the conference suggested that there should be a test case to claim rights through the court system. Five million people, Eddie Kuiko Sambo, Sam Parsi, Father Dave Parsi, James Rice and Celio Mapo Sali decided they were challenged for land rights in the High Court of Australia. In 1982, led by Mabo, they began their legal claim for ownership of their land. Another problem came in 1989 when a justice of the Supreme Court of Queensland went to Mur to establish traditional laws of inheritance. In 1990, he told the High Court that Kariko Mabo was not adopted by custom and therefore his claims on Mur were denied. In 1985, while working as a field officer at the Townsville Aboriginal Legal Aid Service, Mabo had received a research grant to study land tenure in the Torres Strait Islands. It was not until 1992 that Mabo number no. 2 was decided upon. By this time, both Celia and Mapo Sari and Kuroko Mabo had died. Six of the present judges agreed that the Merriam people did have traditional ownership of their land, with one judge dissenting from the majority judgment. They said the Merriam people are entitled as against the whole world to position, occupy and use for the enjoyment of the lands of the Murray Islands. Following the High Court decision in Mabo 2, the Commonwealth Parliament passed a new act enabling Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people throughout Australia to claim rights to land. The legacy of Eddie Mabo was very significant. He corrected a historical problem. He delivered to the nation a national land rights scheme and said to the nation, here it is, you can now build on that for the future and provide some equitable recognition of history and some firm economic and cultural foundation for the future development of both Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal societies in this country. 
the law now recognises that Torres Strait Islanders and Aboriginals' land ownership rights existed before the first white settlement and may still exist. In 1995, three years after Eddie Carrico Rabo's death, the traditional mourning period was over and time had to come to celebrate his life. The islanders performed a traditional ceremony not seen on the island for more than 80 years. This signified that Eddie Carrico Rabo had been buried as a leader. On the 3rd of June, each year, Mabo Day is celebrated in the Torres Strait Islands. Eddie Mabo won the Australian of the Year medal in 1992. This was awarded after he died. The award was in recognition of his long and determined battle to gain justice for his people and the work over many years to gain legal recognition for indigenous people's rights. On the 21st of May 2008, James Cook University named its Townsville Campus Library the Eddie Carrico Mabo Library.